This is a, an astonishing finding on Science Alert. June 1st article today, our sun's mysterious 11-year cycle appears to be driven by alignment of our planets. So it's not just the Earth that uh, has a gravitational pull from the alignment of planets. It, they also have something to do with our sun, even though our sun is much larger than all our planets put together. Every 11 years, our sun cycles through from riotous flare and sunspot activity to a quieter period before ramping up again. It's almost as regular as clockwork, and for years astronomers have been wondering what causes all this. Now they've proposed a new solution. Again, it's just a theory. Even though the solar system's planets are much smaller than the sun, the gravity of some of them is able to influence our star's magnetic field. This, the researchers assert, is what controls the solar cycle. Venus, Earth, and Jupiter assert a small gravitational tug on the sun as they orbit it. The result is comparable to the way the moon's gravity influences Earth's tides, producing a regularly timed ebb and flow. The team has traced back 1,000 years of solar cycles between the years 1000 and 2009 AD, comparing the data against the movements of the planets in that time. They found an impressively strong link between the two. Quote, there is an astonishingly high level of coordinates. What we see is complete parallelism with the planets over the course of 90 cycles. End quote. This is what physicist Frank Stephanie of the Helmholtz Zentrum Dresden Rosendorf in Germany said. He says everything points to a clocking, clocked process. What the team found is that the tidal forces are strongest when Earth, Venus, and Jupiter align, and that is alignment uh, that occurs every 11.07 years, falling at the same time as the solar minimum. That is, Earth, Venus, and Jupiter aligning. The effect is a weak one, unable to affect the Sun's interior. This potentially could be why no one has previously connected the dots between the solar cycle and the periodicity of the planetary alignment. Well, I, let me put in my comment here. When we have a solar minimum, as we're entering in now, we also have more earthquake and volcanic activity. So if Earth and Venus and Jupiter are aligned, that alignment probably has an effect on our uh, seismic activity as well. Now going back to the article, but the team has found that despite being weak, the tidal forces can still affect the sun's magnetic field. In particular, they can influence oscillations in something called the Taylor instability, T-A-Y-L-E-R, Taylor instability. Such instabilities appear in toroidal or donut-shaped magnetic fields where pressure is applied perpendicular to the field's direction. This causes the field to become compressed like a spinal column, creating instabilities a bit like slipped disks. These slipped disks in the magnetic field are the Taylor instabilities, and they create perturbations in the solar flux and magnetic field. Even a small amount of energy, such as, say, from a tidal event, can reverse the oscillations of these perturbations. And if those tidal events were occurring for example, every 11 years or so, they could trigger a cyclic reversal in the polarity of the magnetic field, resulting in regular fluctuations in activity that corresponds to the cycle. Quote, when we discovered the current driven Taylor instability undergoing helicity oscillations in our computer simulations, Stephanie said, I asked myself what would happen if the plasma was impacted on by a small tidal-like perturbation. The result was phenomenal. The oscillation was really excited and became synchronized with the timing of the external perturbation. Pretty neat, huh? And this model could help explain some other mysteries about the Sun. For example, most solar cycles have double peaks at their maximum with a brief lull in between. This appeared in the simulation. 
other regions to be explored are the way the tidal forces potentially affect the plasma layers in the tachocline at the base of the convection zone so that the magnetic flux is conducted more easily. It could also help us to understand the giant magnetized Rossby waves that have only recently been discovered rippling across the sun and may have something to do with flare activity. In turn, this could help us better predict our sun's giant violent outbursts, a good thing considering that they have the potential to affect our life here on Earth. Now, what are the Rossby waves? Uh, they're giant waves that drive weather on Earth and have been found rippling across our sun just recently. Here we have an illustration of it by NASA, STO, again on Space Alert. These giant waves, as you can see them, it looks like a sea. You see them right here. These giant waves that drive weather on Earth have just been found rippling across our sun. Researchers found evidence that the same giant magnetized waves that ripple through Earth's atmosphere might also exist on our sun. These waves are known as Rossby or planetary waves, R-O-S-S-B-Y, and they usually occur way above Earth's surface, influencing weather patterns and the jet stream winds. But this is the first time the waves have been spotted on the sun, and in this case, they're planet-sized. The discovery could explain why solar activity, such as solar storms and flares, are so hard for us to predict something that could become an issue in future if a powerful solar flare is directed straight at Earth. The discovery of magnetized Rossby waves on the Sun offers the tantalizing possibility that we can predict space weather much farther in advance. This is what lead researcher Scott McIntosh said. He's from the U.S. National Center of Atmospheric Research. On Earth, Rossby waves occur both in the atmosphere and in the oceans, and they form in rotating fluids. In the atmosphere, these waves affect a path of the jet stream winds and the formation of low and high pressure systems, which affect the weather we experience on the ground. In the ocean, a huge Rossby wave, wave have been uh, spotted traveling westward around the planet and is responsible for a strange humming sound coming from the Caribbean Sea. Humming sound from the Caribbean Sea. Considering that the sun is rotating and is largely made up of plasma that acts like a vast magnetic magnetized ocean, it was suspected that Rossby wave type waves might also form on our host star, but this is the first time researchers have been uh, ever been able to detect them. In the past, attempts to spot these waves have failed because we've only had one advantage one vantage point from which to study the sun, and that's here from Earth. But there was a brief window between 2001 and 2014 during which researchers saw the sun's entire atmosphere at once thanks to observations from NASA's Solar Dynamic Observatory and Solar Terrestrial Relations Observatory. The latter mission was made up of two separate spacecraft sent into orbit around the sun and that data allowed McIntosh and his team to get a 360 degree view of the sun and see if any Rossby-like patterns emerged. They found bands of magnetized activity that propagated slowly across the sun, very similar to the Rossby waves found here on Earth. These waves appeared to move westward on average at a speed of, a speed of about 3.25 meters or 10.7 feet per single second. In the sun's northern hemisphere at about and about 2.65 meters, that's 8.7 feet per second, in the southern hemisphere. Still, uh, it's still early days, and at this stage, the team is unsure what impact these waves are having on the sun. But one hypothesis they're investigating is that the waves could be linked to the sun's 11-year solar cycle, where solar cycle activity regularly peaks and drops off. It's possible that it's all tied together, but we needn't. Uh, we need to have a global perspective to see that. Macintosh said. 
We believe that people have been observing the impacts of these Rossi-like waves for decades, but have not been able to put the whole picture together. If solar activity is linked to these Rossby waves, it would be a huge deal for our understanding of the sun's unpredictable weather patterns. Solar flares are known to mess with telecommunications here on Earth, but we still struggle to predict when they are coming. Bad weather in space can hinder or damage satellite operations and communications and navigation systems, as well as cause power out, uh, grid outages, leading to tremendous socioeconomic losses. Estimates put the cost of space weather hazards at 10 US billion dollars per year. The bad news is, until researchers get another 360 degree glimpse of the sun, it's going to be a struggle to map out what all of this means. Let's hope this is incentive for NASA to get some more eyes on our sun sooner rather than later. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today more of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.